All right, we have some really cool things to talk about today. I'm excited to have Andrew up here, excited to be on the stage uh, talking with you guys and having you guys listen to, to some of the cool things we're going to talk about. I think it would be remiss to be up here with, uh, pretty much impossible to be up here with, with Andrew and FanDuel during Super Bowl week and not talk about um, Gronk. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that don't know, which would be surprising at this point, but FanDuel is doing a, a pretty insane execution this week uh, featuring Rob Gronkowski with a live Super Bowl spot called Kick of Destiny. So I think one of the things that we'd all love to know is, A, um, how did this execution really come together and and what can you tell us about it and c are we insane and <laughs> well i did use the word insane in there <laughs> uh first uh, good to be here uh has anyone had a chance to see a very large wrapped uh hotel building thank you yeah from the plane i hope i hope it wasn't driving we want to make sure that we get the word out um this this was a long time coming and genuinely uh a scary, crazy, big, audacious idea that somehow kept moving through the creative process. So for those that don't know, we are running a commercial live during the third quarter and we have created a football field uh, 20 minutes away from the stadium where Rob is going to spend 30 seconds taking a big old breath and kicking a ball and uh, hoping to get America $10 million. So a massive uh, parlay bet that we made on the Super Bowl that we needed a lot of partners to join us with. The NFL was on board and excited. Uh, the folks at Fox Sports are accommodating us being a live camera that's into the feet of the game. Uh, our bosses were crazy enough to agree to this. And we're really excited about the storytelling that's happening and the fact that we're part of the game instead of being an advertiser in the game and that's the big thing we wanted to accomplish so at FanDuel you know we're an entertainment product that is part of the game you have an opportunity to enjoy the experience of watching sports being more involved than you would have otherwise so for us to have just shown up and put an ad in the Super Bowl and behave as if we are like any other brand that's not a part of the game, just wouldn't have been living up to who we are. Uh, and it is scary. I'm, my blood pressure meds are fully stocked. Um, I haven't slept in quite a while. I wake up with lots of strange dreams of Galuli attacking Gronk just in the nick of time. <laughs> Things like that that no one should have to be thinking about this week. Uh, I should be having fun, but I'll do this instead. How, how long of a kick is it? It's 25 yards, and he is practicing like a maniac. I mean, I've, he's, he's talking it up in the press saying he, he's been catching the ball all these years, but he really wanted to be kicking it. So we're that gonna was see the what first happens. thing he said. Yeah. So when we actually presented the idea to him, he looked at me and said, Andrew, I, I catch. I don't kick. And we loved that moment, put it in the ad. And his very next question was, can I wear the old one-bar helmet? And at that point, we knew oh, he's going to do this. It's now just how is he going to be doing this? He's been practicing like crazy. He stunk when we shot the first commercials, and he just keeps getting better. We got Nick Folk working with him. We got Adam Vinatieri working with him, uh, and he's getting a lot better at it. That's and awesome. just the That's mind good. of someone that cares is really interesting to see it work. Right. Yeah, no, it's going to be very exciting to see. So outside of the Super Bowl spot itself, what other supporting media – are you going to be out there with different channels, different platforms, and how is that working to ultimately get people to place bets and watch the spot when it airs in the third quarter? Yeah, so I guess backing up a little bit, when we did the brief, it was, hey, we wanna, we're gonna be in the Super Bowl with an ad, but we don't wanna make a Super Bowl ad. That was actually the brief. And so to be able to have the punctuation and conclusion of this storyline where he's training and you learn like, hey, if I just place a wager on FanDuel, then I can be part of the customers that win in this 10 million bucks. And that's been helping us with customer acquisition and excitement leading into the Super Bowl because I was also the person last year in the media that was quoted as saying I'd be an idiot for actually putting an ad in the Super Bowl. It would be like you were advertising M&Ms on Halloween night. And luckily those reporters remembered it and played it back to me this year. <laughs> and we were able to say, well, hold on, we changed it up a little bit. 
we're building all the excitement towards the final 30 seconds as opposed to starting and finishing 30 seconds there. And it includes lots of ways that it's coming to life. So if you're in downtown Phoenix outside of the NFL experience, there is a 30 foot high, 100 foot long fan experience where you can go into the cage and you hear that it's your kick of destiny and you have the chance to drive a ball through Rob Gronkowski's fingers <laughs> and you win a free $20 bonus bet at the retail sports book across the way. So exciting that there's lots of ways that we're bringing that to life. We also made a huge statue of Gronk's foot. So there's like a big marble statue you can take your picture with, with Gronk's foot. Goofy stuff that we just kept saying yes to that's been making this thing so much more fun. Right, right. So fun and all, and so engaging for the yeah. fans. Yeah, no, I think it's great. It also sounds like a logistical nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it definitely so, is that. So too. from that standpoint, uh, and not just from a media standpoint, but legal, contracts, getting the buy-in internally. So talk a little bit about that process, how it went from this idea to being able to get all the people that needed to sign off on it internally to, to buy, uh, buy in on it. Yeah, that's, it, it's a good point. Like a lot of the challenge, you know, trying to let the creative team run while in the background we're giving them as much support as possible. Um, making sure that we could afford to do it in the first place, uh, making sure that we, you know, have the folks in legal, what if a, a big gust of wind comes? Are we still able to award this prize if suddenly the football starts rolling away on live TV? It's live. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned that, but there's a lot of things that scare me about that. Uh, and you know, just all of the work to make sure that we're building all of the details up with Fox, with the NFL, uh, just to make sure that this comes to life beautifully. You can actually, as you fly into Phoenix right now, you can see the football field that we have set up in the desert. Uh, lit, it's going to be lit up beautifully. It's just an exciting process to go through and take this biggest swing. Yeah, I mean, talking about the the live part of it, the element of suspense, the element of the unknown with yeah. it right now. Um, it's the first time you'll be watching the Super Bowl and nobody actually knows the outcome of right. what's in an ad. Exactly. It's actually the second ad that's happened live, but the other one was like a pre-recorded are they not pre-recorded, but they knew precisely what was going to happen. None of us know the drama of how right. this finishes. So, so outside of the heart medication and the other yeah. things that have been going on with that, how have you and the team been able to deal with this unedited process? I mean, we are, we're all in marketing. We're all in advertising in here. We like control of the situation. We like yeah. to know what's going to happen. So how has that been in these last couple of months lead up to this? So as you'd expect, to have this kind of creativity creates a much higher standard of discipline. So the work, I just came from another hour and a half prep session where we're working with the live production team that does Olympic broadcast work, partnered with the group that created the work to this point. And we're going through like every half second of precisely what needs to happen with the team and teeing up the music and when to hit the fireworks. Like it is, wow. there's a level of discipline that we need to have to make sure that we're not being foolish with a $7 million 30 second buy. Right, right. Uh, focusing on Gronk uh, specifically for a second, I know you guys signed him on in, in December as a brand ambassador. Yeah. When you guys had this idea, was it Gronk and then you had this idea or did you have this idea and you guys were like, I think Gronk's the guy for it? That's interesting. So it actually developed sort of concurrently. We started working with Rob uh, and then this idea came as the response to our brief. Wyden Kennedy's a great agency. They were passionate about this idea um, and it naturally, you know, you can imagine, hey, we need someone charismatic. We need someone that actually has the courage to do it on this kind of a big stage live. Quite frankly, there were in considerations, there were a lot of A-list celebrities that we heard feedback would not be interested in doing it. It's just too much pressure for their career. And then just the nature of who he is and the fact that he's connected to the Fox broadcast, so we get to do some stuff pre-game and a bunch of other things, just it made absolute sense that it's someone from the sports world that crosses over into popular culture that doesn't take himself 
himself too seriously. Right. Uh, so he was the perfect choice to play the role. That's and he's been loving it. And little things like, hey, Andrew, I was just talking to Jimmy Fallon. He'd like me to come on The Tonight Show. Are you cool with that? That's a that's a real question you get yeah, in marketing right. land. Like, yes, um, please yeah, wait, do let me it think for one quick Absolutely. millisecond. Sure, oh. we actually have the folks from Wyden Kennedy that are actually building this crazy thing that just walked in the room. Thank you guys. <laughs> um, that's great. So, all of that you talk about on you know amazing unpaid media experiences like him going on Jimmy Fallon afterwards. What is your definition of success on? Monday with this well the best part is you know we built this to be able to be the leading buzz generator leading up to the Super Bowl when we want to get all the new customers and we need to have the bets before kickoff yeah there is live betting during the game as well but the majority of the business will come by Sunday at 6 23 p.m. and so we will know even before he steps back to make the kick that this has been an outstanding success. Right. So, and it'd sure be a lot of fun if it was punctuated with him drilling it through right. the uprights. So that, that was a question. Uh, you know, maybe we turn the cameras off for this, but you know, are you hoping he makes it or misses it? <laughs> no, we're, we're definitely hoping that he makes it. I mean, uh, it, it would be awesome to watch him drill yeah, it right through the Yeah, it's the end middle. of the story, and yeah. we'd love to be able to let. Uh, it's awesome that everyone. You know, around the living rooms of America in this moment, everyone can shush each other and watch and be cheering for the same thing. And it might be the only time during the broadcast, well, it is the only time during the broadcast when everyone, well, except maybe our competitors, gets to cheer for the exact same thing that's live and no one knows the outcome to in the Super Bowl. So that's right. pretty cool. I mean, you have to imagine there's going to be millions of people pretty glued to the TV watching and waiting. I suspect, and there might be a couple $20 bills changing oh, hands in doubt. living rooms as well. Without a doubt. Um, I, I mean, it's great. I, I think we're all super excited to, to see it go down. Uh, taking a little bit more of a, a 60,000 foot view into, into FanDuel on a whole um, and what you guys look at from a goal perspective on, on the marketing that you're, that you're out there with. I'm thinking that there must be, you know, some sort of brand awareness focus to what you guys do, just given more and more competitors by the day coming coming into your space. But then also at the end of the day, probably a huge goal to have people downloading the app and, and obviously placing bets. So what are the goals that you guys really drill in on from a KPI standpoint? And then secondarily to that, how do you balance that brand awareness and performance part of it? It's a great question. We uh we talk a lot about sales overnight and brand over time this is a very new category so sports uh wagering only became legal in 2018 and it's only rolling out state by state so this is a period of time when we're fortunate that we have a great advantage of being part of flutter and knowing how to run a really intuitive, great sports betting app with a great risk and trading team that can offer more markets than everyone else. And then the team's gotten really good at spending money to be able to really be focused on driving acquisition uh, with more value than in any of our competitors. And now that we're up at scale, it drives even more value because about one in every four new customers come as a referral of word of mouth. And so the larger we get, the more of that scale benefit we continue to bring into the business. And it's why we're currently enjoying the um, around a 50 share and a leadership as America's number one sports betting company. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Very cool. So you, you talk about the state by state part of it, which leads to the next question what are some of the obstacles that you're seeing in in your space specifically and then like not even just in the online betting space but also from a digital advertising from a um from a regular just regular traditional advertising standpoint what are the obstacles that you guys see that you're going to have to overcome and what are you doing to kind of head those off before you get to them yeah well the first and most obvious is that we need to be building this category the right way for the long term so we take it incredibly seriously to make sure that the 100 people that work in regulatory and compliance at FanDuel, looking for things like problem patterns and play behavior, uh, building tools in our app like 
alerting people when they've been on the app for too long. You know, when you think of the challenges in responsible gaming, there's certainly a, we want to have a whole bunch of recreational gamblers enjoying $5 wagers for a fun parlay on the game tonight. And, you know, what we look out for is strange patterns in people's play where they suddenly bet more or they chase losses or the amount of time that they spend on it, which would be taking them away from the other things that are important in their life. So we have great tools that we bring attention to, time limits, wager limits, deposit limits. Um, and we, we have a team that's continuing to work with, what's great is you can use a lot of machine learning and AI to be able to get even better at doing this, to be able to flag behaviors that are out of the ordinary before it becomes a problem. So we're treating that incredibly carefully uh, with a lot of diligence to make sure that we build this business the right way for the long term. Right. Uh, and luckily that's shared by everyone in senior management throughout the business to, it, it doesn't matter if it's not good for our customer, that's not something we can do. Oh, that's great, awesome. Well, thank you for that. I think we'll, we'll all be tuned in on Sunday to see how Gronk does with his uh, with his kick. Do we have time for uh, a question or two? Two questions, great. Anyone from the audience? Oh, here comes the mic. I don't know what the question. I got a big voice I can talk about. I was just curious about your brand partnership with Pat McAfee as well. I know we're focused heavy on Broadway. Yeah. I totally understand that. Very similar character too. Um, more of the college side of the space, but I'm curious just to see how you're going to bring him into like the Super Bowl and what you're going to do with him there. Oh, that's a good question. So right now, uh, Pat is at Radio Row. He's broadcasting his show this week from the FanDuel experience that we actually have inside Radio Row. As uh, some may know, many may not, that we've actually launched FanDuel Television Network. So we have FanDuel TV. It previously was the TVG network, and now we've added and expanded it with bringing other sports to the world. Uh, so there's horse racing, uh, odds making and betting shows, some underappreciated uh, international sports you can also find on there. Um, and Pat is uh, is at Radio Row. We it's awesome working with him he is such a great character with a great following last year he set the world record for the most people betting on any one bet so he had 225,000 people that followed his same game parlay which is crazy uh, I keep saying it's the world record and no one stops me from saying that that's not true uh, <laughs> And we are part of Flutter, so at some point someone would have tapped me on the shoulder to say, actually, there was this other thing in some World Cup game, but, but we believe that it's the biggest bet of all time. We love working with Pat. Coming your way. Oh, I saw you first. Hey, how you doing? My name is Will Braffram with Revel Moments. I have a question. You mentioned that you have um, FanDuel TV. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and what type of storytelling you plan on doing through that platform? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so FanDuel TV is the first better first sports network. So it's really focused around making the betting experience better as it's connected with the media that you're enjoying. So it's a linear network. There's also an OTT app sort of three different kinds of programming that happens. We have uh, analysis that comes from experts. So Kay Adams has a show called Up and Adams on there every day talking about what's going on in the world of sports. Uh, we also have our core horse racing business. There's, uh, it's obviously a great watch and wager experience that you can see uh, different horse racing venues and they can cut from one to the next and then that's something you can bet on right within the sportsbook app uh, and then there's overnight Australian basketball and European basketball and other things that we can bring to life on the network as well uh, so it's new it's growing uh, there's lots of opportunity for us to keep making that an even bigger part of our entertainment product You know what, I think um, it's interesting. I, I think a lot of the power of the ratings for the NFL come from the idea that a lot of people gamble on it and a lot of people have fantasy and things like that. What are some ideas for other sports, if I was working on like other sports that would want to get more people engaged in the world of 
gambling, especially now that it's legal, um, what are some things that they could do, you think? So yeah, take, you know, baseball, this, basketball, whatever. Every sport, uh, um, every league has been comfortable with, you know, gradually embracing what the opportunities are, connecting more with FanDuel and, and other sports books. There's, um, you know, clearly an increase happens in the viewership, especially through the completion of the game, if you actually uh, have decided to place a bet on that game. And there are a lot of people that see that as their entertainment product. We equate it to rather than a $5 Amazon Prime movie rental tonight, I'm going to put $5 on this NBA basketball game. And I'm going to have these three players. And if it comes home, it's 68 bucks, and it's just a lot of fun. Um, so each league has uh, set the edge for where they're accepting sports betting to be within the broadcast, and we're working with them to make sure that we do that well, because obviously we want this to work the right way for the long term. Now, you know, 10 years ago, uh, the announcer would sort of signal some weird last second field goal might have made half of their viewing audience kind of happy. Now they can be much more open about you know, who's likely to win, who's likely to beat the spread. And there'll be a lot more of that discussion again this year at the Super Bowl. This is the first time that the Super Bowl's ever happened in a state with legalized betting. So it's also the first time that people will be able to actually wager in the game, like while they're sitting in the stadium. Uh, so it's certainly one more signal of the acceptability of the category and how it could be applied well in sport. What could leagues do to make people or to get them more interested in doing that. Say that again from the other crowd. What, what, would, what could uh, leagues do to get people more interested in either fantasy or gambling or whatever? Yeah, the, uh, so when we work with them, there's, you know, they're often interested in making that part of the storytelling of the game. There's certain comfort levels that different league partners and media networks have today. And they're learning from each other to see what works and where people are comfortable. So, for example, the NBA and TNT is very comfortable if the game is lopsided to talk about what the over-under is for the game and where that's sat at the beginning of the game versus where it is now. So they're embracing it in a way that extends viewership more than asking the audience to participate in our category. That's still something that we take uh, as the driving nature of what we do. Awesome. Let's give these Thank gentlemen you. a round of applause.